Hello, hi, and welcome to Empathic Fire. I'm your reader, Jay. These are going to be general messages for the sign of Cancer in October 2018. Hello, Cancer. How are you guys doing? Hope you guys are doing well. Shuffled off camera to save time, so you see your main spread there. What I'm going to do now is shuffle for your outcome, Cancer. Once those two, or excuse me, and um, the bottom of the deck is going to be your overall energy. Once all cards are out and they're lying face up, that's when the reading will begin. Time for that is down in the description box below. Also down there is information on getting a personal reading with me if you feel so inclined. So, like I said, what you're going to do is sh what we're going to do is shuffle for that outcome right now. Outcome for Cancer, October 2018. Okay. Whoa. No. No. Did not feel right. Outcome, October 2018, Cancer. Yes. Again, too. Okay. Is this right? Yes, thank you. Okay. You you were you were meant to have two cards in your outcome. <laughs> Let's move this over a little bit. I don't I've taken them before, but I just didn't feel it the first time, but that it came out twice. It's like, okay, I got you. Overall energy is the bottom of the deck. And look at that. All of these came out face up. That's interesting. Haven't had that happen in a long time. All right, Cancer. Let's see what's going on. Where is Cancer in October 2018? Please show me Cancer for October 2018. Here? Thank you. All right, Cancer, coming into October 2018, you come in as the Hermit card. Card associated with Virgo, so there might be a Virgo of significance in your life. Capricorn, excuse me, Capricorn, I did say Capricorn, so maybe that's also a person of significance in your life. But you are Cancer, not Capricorn or Virgo. Uh, you've been on a hiatus, you've been kind of keeping to yourself. <laughs> big surprise there, big shocker, right, Cancer? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I shouldn't I shouldn't say that but uh, that's kind of how I feel I kind of feel like this is like really standard this is kind of like what is expected of you even though it is a card associated with Virgo uh, cancer you are known to retreat you are known to you know go into your shell back away into you know a quiet cave and really you know be by yourself not be by yourself necessarily but be left to your own devices to be comfortable is, is kind of what you're known for. The Hermit card, however, isn't always a card of comfortability. It's not always a card of rest and respite, which is kind of what you like, Cancer. You like to have regular intervals of rest and relaxation and getting recuperated and, and getting back to your sociable self or, or putting more fuel in your tank so you can go out and you know do the grocery shopping or go to work or see your friends or do whatever. Uh, the Hermit card is more about, it's like a deeply self-imposed energy of being alone. I mean, this person is in a coffin. <sighs> it's not like a regular Saturday night. <laughs> like most people don't spend their time this way. But this person has voluntarily done this. So for some of you Cancer, some of you may have like literally gone on a retreat. Literally gone away from... Uh, your regular routines or what other people might regularly do in their free time and you may have been doing something from from a uh, uh, from a position of meditating or spirituality or reflection or self development um, it is kind of that time of year where people are doing that like you know overnight camping sort of thing to kind of get back in touch with nature before it's like too cold for like an amateur to go overnight camping or, you know, going to a yoga retreat. It's like, oh, it's still, the weather's still nice enough for me to do that and still, you know, make my morning train to my commute on Monday. So some of you may have done that or are doing that or are planning to do that soon. Um, and the Hermit card is usually a card where you feel 
compelled to do so from a deep, deep place or the place that you're going to is going to get you to this deep, deep place within yourself so that you kind of come out on the other side more enlightened, more invigorated or more knowledgeable or aware of something. Ah, uh, cancer. I think this has been more of like a self-development thing. I don't think it's necessarily about your spiritual enhancement. I think it's really about you've been sort of putting a lot out and you need to restock. You need to you need to get your your ducks back in a row. You kind of need yeah, you need to recalibrate. So this isn't this isn't necessarily healing from some deep dark issue or some plaguing issue. I feel that this is really like a healing like literally you've got no gas in the tank. You've pushed your car to the nearest gas station and you're going to fill it up. Like it's it's very methodical, it's very practical whatever you're doing or whatever you're planning to do. It's not your motivation isn't like I said, it's not from a deeply spiritual place, which is not, the the hermit doesn't have to be that, but I think the hermit is typically, um, typically uh, associated with that. Let me move this a little bit because we want everything in frame. There we go. Better. <laughs> I just noticed that. I apologize. Um, anyway, so that's kind of where you are. It's kind of where your mind is. I think that's, at the, I think it's a it's a goal of yours to like i said refuel your body refuel restock your mind your spirit all of that stuff kind of get yourself checked up you know maybe that maybe that's it maybe to kind of use a, the analogy with the car maybe you ran out of gas and you know after a long road trip and you know you you're close enough that you can get refueled or you know you're you're not stranded out in the middle of nowhere you're close enough to society or, or civilization that you can go and get yourself get your car full of gas and then as soon as you get back home and you unpack your bags you're gonna you're gonna take your car in for a checkup like I kind of feel like that's what you're doing like you're you might take you know if you're doing like a retreat thing for like a week the whole week won't be spent in the retreat you'll take like three days and do the retreat and then the other four days from a week long, away from work, away from your regular routine, you're just going to spend relaxing, getting yourself pedic you know, pampered, pedicures, manicures, massages, long baths, getting back to the gym, whatever you do. Like, yeah, it's like not earth shattering that you're doing this. Other people might think it is. Other people might think it's kind of weird. Or other people might think, oh my god, what are you doing, cancer? Like... I haven't seen you in like eight days and you're like, yeah, I, I did something. And you're not making a big deal out of it. It's the motivation is not other than maintenance. Like it's routine for you that you have to kind of go away from others and kind of recalibrate yourself and get yourself reacclimated to life or to social events or to the demands of your work the demands of your home life. Like you're just taking a little bit of time away and then you're going to come and you're going to pamper yourself. You're going to make yourself feel good and then you'll be ready to go back out there. And I feel that there's sort of like a polar response. I feel that most of you, if not damn near all of you, will choose this. And it's in the antithesis of this. Because I mean, look how... Hmm. Yeah. Another coffin here on your four, four of swords, right? Yeah, four of swords. So the coffin in this case is closed. And in fact, it's being nailed shut, right? Actively nailed shut. And normally in the traditional Rider weight deck, you're going to see this card and someone's lying sort of like in a mausoleum or on top of like a stone not coffin, but I guess, I, what, what would you call that? Oh, I can't think of the word right now, but someone's lying down and there are three swords above them, one's at the ready, but the person appears to be asleep or dead. <laughs> and I mean, God, if you're, you're lying in a ma mausoleum, I would hope that you're dead or, you know, 
<laughs> super gothic and it's like 1994. Anyway, <laughs> this feels similar, but somehow opposite or just not in, in step with the Hermit card. This Four of Swords typically is talking about rest, respite, reflection, and all that good stuff, which is basically what the Hermit talks about. But in this particular... Oh my god, I threw that down on the ground and I didn't mean to do that. Hang on a second. Come to me. There you are. Okay. Uh, this card, to me, feels more isolated somehow uh, than the Hermit card, simply because the coffin is closed. And not only is it closed, it's been nailed shut. So there's like this feeling of wanting to deeply hide away, to never be seen again, or to, in some cases, this is like, I feel like for some of you, this would have felt like, or does feel like, or will feel like, depending on when you come into this energy, feel like self-imposed punishment. Like, this is what I deserve, or this is what is necessary. And I feel like that is drastic, and it's, like, too much. Like, cut yourself a break, Cancer. Don't lock yourself away. Just go away. If you if you have to go away, don't, <laughs> don't nail the coffin shut. Just close the damn coffin. And I feel like there is a feeling that that was a tendency that you did that previously to this that is how you normally would have behaved that's how you normally would have approached this whole recuperation or this need to recuperate you would have deeply like you would have gone like off grid really just like people are like have you seen cancer no i haven't seen him in like two weeks and that would have been par for the course for you that would have been something normal in the case of the hermit i think you're taking it it's ironic because this is the major and this is a minor, right? Major arcana is usually have a lot more oomph to them, a lot more like packs a deeper pump or packs a harder punch, right? Or however you're supposed to say that. <laughs> um, I feel the opposite is happening here. So there's this idea of opposites going on thematically for you, where what typically would be done is not being done. So typically you might fall off the face of the earth when you need to recuperate, you might really, really, you know, retreat back into your cave, back into your shell. And people aren't seeing that from you. They're actually seeing your face. Like you, if you are going on a retreat, if you are going to, you know, a, a spa or whatever, or some type of relaxation package that you're gifting yourself with, you know, people might typically not expect to hear from you while you're away getting yourself sorted. Now you're going to check into a place on Facebook. You're going to update your Instagram. You're going to, you're going to put things on your, on, on, on your Twitter. And people are like, oh, wow, look, Cancer said they're having a great time in so-and-so. In the hot springs or whatever the hell you're doing. Or, oh, Cancer just got a Swedish massage. That's cool. You know, your friends are reading this or people that know you are reading this or, you know, you're calling people up or texting people while you're, oh, I'm waiting to get my massage and right now I'm having mimosas, blah, blah, blah. Like, people are not used to hearing from you. I think that this hermit energy is a lot more communicative. It's a lot more open. And, and like I said, it's not as deep. And it, there's irony there because it is still a coffin. And the difference to me is one coffin is closed, one coffin is open. And... That lantern that is typical of the hermit to carry is so bright. So it's not a deep dive. It's not a deep dive. Typically, and again, this feels imposed. This feels like punishment. This feels like, oh, I've got to make up for all the bad things I've done. You know, it's sort of like repentance in a way. And I feel like... You are not in the mood to repent, honestly. You're not in the mood to punish yourself or feel like a martyr or, or make yourself feel like you need to be, uh, you know, put to task for the things that you've done or what you haven't done. It's like, nah, it's too much. Too much, too much of that has has really affected you in the in the past is what I'm feeling. This is interesting. I don't know where this is applying. This could be your work life. This could be your home or, or your romantic life. Or this could be self-development. Like, if anything, I'm feeling this is mostly self-development. But 
It could go in any area of your life. Cancer is, of course, a general reading. Uh, yeah. And no matter how you splice it, you've been busy. You have been busy. Yep. Boom, boom. And there too. Yep. I think you've been spread a little thin because you got these two cards. I want to talk about them together, even though they didn't come together. They are catty corner to each other, but that doesn't mean that they're always linked. But I feel like these two are kind of kind of talking to each other. So you've got the Queen of Pentacles above your starting position and the Eight of Pentacles to the right of your starting position. And those are impacting you as you come into October. So I think a lot of you are, have been honing your skills. Honing your skills, enhancing your life, enhancing your finances, focused on your finances, uh, focused on your career, focused on your resources, or finding ways to really utilize them or make them kind of grow on their own. So in some cases, this is about investment, but basically the queen of pentacles is, <coughs> excuse me, as you can see, <coughs> excuse me, she's working for her dollar. She's not sitting at home polishing her gold or her brass goblets or anything like that. She's out there about to climb that ladder, about to pluck whatever fruit is ripe up in that tree and bring it down and add it to her bushel. And she's, she's putting in hard work. She's putting in an honest day's work. And so, Cancer, I feel that that's you. If it's not you, it's someone that you know. But I feel a lot of this is your energy, if I'm honest. Like, there are potentials for other people to be here. Like I said, this could be a Virgo person, but mm, I feel this is mostly your energy. One second. Excuse me. It's been like a, a conscious goal. One second, Cancer. Hold on. All right, Cancer, I apologize. I had a tickle in my throat, and I didn't want to cough all in the middle of your video that would be rude um so anyway queen of pentacles this could be someone else but like i said i think it's mostly going to be your energy i don't really feel a heavy presence of other people i think for the for the purposes of this reading it's really about focus on cancer <laughs> don't focus on anybody else so if you're <coughs> excuse me in your queen of pentacles energy right now You're being really, like, industrious. You're being, like, really on the ball, on the money in terms of your work, in terms of your finances, in terms of your career. One second, again. <clears throat> Hopefully that was the end of that. So, you're really, like, you've been focused on something for a long time. And I think it's really this, this, this strain of focusing on your finances, your career, your, your, <clears throat> your stability... Or, like I kind of talked about a little bit with the Hermit and the Four of Swords, for some of you it is about personal development. And, and, and some of you it might be a bit spiritual, but it's very casual spiritual development. Or it's very casual consideration towards your spirituality. Like, I'm not feeling anything super deeply, but I am feeling like this sort of tenacious track that you're on like you've been thinking about and you've been focused on and you've been structured and you've been interested in making sure that things fall into place and that things follow a certain plan or a certain outline <clears throat> that you set up previous to that and so your queen of pentacles is here to sort of af to to sort of act as an affirmation on that in that Whatever you've been working towards, whatever you've been focused on, it's a good goal and, and, and you feel strong in it. You just have to kind of keep that pace or you've been keeping the pace. And then the Eight of Pentacles is kind of talking about, 
I'm getting this feeling of like a manifestation feeling, okay? And I don't think that traditionally the Eight of Pentacles is a card of manifestation. I think it is like sort of what I was talking about with the Queen of Pentacles energy. It's more about practical things are done practically, methodically, and, and there's plans and follow through and work, 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 work for output, 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 or uh, results. <clears throat> the Eight of Pentacles is very results oriented. Um, but I feel this is more of like a manifestation thing. Like, like I said, the Eight of Pentacles is usually, it shows quickly the result of hard work or the result of staying on task. This I feel is still like a little ways down the line. Um, and it's because there is this element of manifesting. There is this element of I've put in the practical means here, but then there's like this missing piece that might be called luck that might re revolve around or rely on other people. And it's just not clearly a matter of one plus two equals three. This is definitely more of an, of an energy of there's a missing sort of, <clears throat> there's an unknown factor or an unknown variable that you have accounted for, like you've made space for it, Cancer. You've allowed for like a margin of error because of something that's outside of your control. And that's very interesting because traditionally in the Rider Waite deck and other decks, usually the Eight of Pentacles is about explicit control and explicit input and equaling a certain output or result. There's a bit of that here, but for some reason I'm just getting, eh, there's something you can't account for that is factoring into this goal of yours involving finances, involving your career, involving your resources or stability. Something is also in the punch, but you don't know what it is. And you, but you've allowed for it. Like you, in some ways, are expecting it. That's why like this potential curveball or this potential, you know, splash or, or upset is not really taking you off your game like you are ready or you have been ready and you've been operating that way so maybe that's it maybe for some of you I don't, I'm not getting this but maybe for some of you this is a matter of I've been saving more than I budgeted myself to save or more than I needed to save because you know you never know about an unexpected cost maybe something will happen at my job and I can't work or maybe there's going to be something that happens with my car or some unexpected cost uh, to repair something in my home. So I've been setting aside more money every month in case something like that happens. Mm -hmm. Will it happen? Has it happened? That's up for you in your life. You'll know. I don't know. But you've been kind of, like I said, allowing for this margin of error. Kind of not putting all your eggs in one basket, basically. You've been really wise you've gambled if you've gambled you've gambled smartly okay i hope that makes sense um and this is kind of making this nice little corner l right here with the hermit which is maybe why you're not going so deep into your meditative state or going into your deep uh spiritual uh enlightenment or journey like maybe that's why you know this week-long vacation isn't going to be spent 100% of the time at the retreat or it's not going to be 100% of the time you're thinking cog or consciously about what's next in your life and, and, and what it means to be a human, what it means to be alive. Like you're, you have the potential to go deeper, but you're not going to go that deep because, you know, you just know the time is not right for that. Either it's just not necessary or the time is not right. Okay, something here, I think we talked a little bit about this opposites thing, right? Mm, mm hmm Okay, thank you. <clears throat> Excuse me. So I think, Cancer, what, what has happened is a little bit 
over here, and I think it was, I can't remember who it was for, but one of, one of the previous signs. You know how typically in, in tarot readings it's past, present, future. I feel like this collectively is sort of like your present, these four cards here. And these two cards here are sort of like a past energy. Energies that you're familiar with, energies that you've experienced before, energies that you are kind of moving away from in the interest of, like I said before, self-development, progress in your in your finances or your career, or just, you know, no longer wanting to feel punished or wanting to, to feel as if you have to punish yourself or lock yourself away because of whatever reason. Mm. Mm hmm Thank you. Wow, okay. Yep. So, you got the Nine of Cups here. And this is significantly playing into the Eight of Pentacles and the Hermit. Nine of Cups. <clears throat> Traditionally, is a wish card or a, risk, a wish granted card. Uh, it can also be a card of uh, miserly gains, uh, miserly contentment and happiness. Uh, traditionally, again, I'm talking about specifically with the Rider Waite deck. This deck, <clears throat> the Santa Morte deck uh, by uh, Fabio Lestrani, in case you were wondering, um, shows this chest of cups, so the, the, the treasure or the pirate's booty, right, on the deck of a ship, and the ship is kind of, let me see, in the distance there is land, but it's a long ways away and it's kind of charging against the sea here this this uh this ship is trudging along and it's got the pirate's booty or the grand treasure on its deck open and and exposed to any passers-by it's precious but then it's not really being looked after because there is a lock there on on in the foreground of the picture but again, the treasure's open and, and, it, and it's exposed. So I feel like <clears throat> that is indicative. And I did say pirate's booty. So there might be a significance in me saying that. Because pirates, are we characterize them as being thieves, as being, as being charlatans and, and violent criminals. So there could be this feeling of, for you, Cancer, a wish of yours was stolen away. A dream of yours was taken away. Okay, out of reach on a ship traveling somewhere where you're not. You're on the land, your treasure chest is on this ship, and there's a distance growing between you and your treasure, between you and your dream, between you and whatever. Okay, and <clears throat> you might feel responsible for this happening, for your dream or your treasure being taken away or stolen away or you know in some cases maybe you feel as though you gave it away and that could also because I did say charlatan and I <laughs> being the ing <laughs> never mind uh <laughs> charlatans are not exactly equated to pirates but I did say that word and a charlatan is more of like a like a trickster right pirates are definitely more characterized as being like directly despicable like clearly thieves a charlatan is a sneak thief is someone who doesn't show that they're trying to get one over on you they're very crafty they're very manipulative and so for me to say that and equate it to pirates is is not a mistake it's not a coincidence it, it there's there's two things going on here where if for some of you, it feels as though this dream or this wish was stolen from you, ripped out from your hands, you know, you know, you got the rug pulled out from under you and whatever you wanted, whoever you wanted, since it is cups, it could be a person or a relationship, is just gone. For others of you, you were tricked out of it. Charlatan. Someone ran a ruse on you, ran a game on you, and you feel duped. You feel stupid. You feel as if you've been made a fool of. And no matter what, whether you gave it away, whether it was stolen away, whether you were tricked into giving it away, whatever, 
you punished yourself. Again, over on this side is where your past is in this reading. And that happened for someone previous to you, either Aries or Taurus. Can't remember which. But that's where you, that's what you did. <clears throat> you lost something, you lost someone. It's no longer really in your vicinity. You can't really attach to or have access to this Nine of Cups energy or this Nine of Cups person or thing. And so you punished yourself for a while in the past. You were really like down on yourself and you locked yourself away and you were kind of looking for your respite that way, just going into your normal retreat, crab retreat mode. And that didn't really serve you because you didn't, you weren't doing anything. You were locked in a dark coffin. There's no light in there and there's no way to push it off of you, push the lid off. You're being, you nailed yourself shut. You punished yourself. And, oh, not, no, I'm not going to say that. I'm really not going to say that. They, they put a word in my mouth and I was like, nope, not going to say that. Because uh, I don't want to. I, and I'm sorry, that might cause a lot of you to go, hey, hey. But no, I can't. I'm not going to say that. Um, but it really, you were down on yourself. You really give yourself a hard time. And coming out of that, because this is not following in past, present, future. It's not like that. All of this is collectively different from these two cards. What I'm seeing collectively for you, Cancer, is that you've taken the lid of the coffin off or you've gotten out of here and now you're going back into the coffin, but you're going back in to this retreat mode, this, this reflective mode, but you're being smarter about it. You're being smarter about it. Okay, so I'm not going to nail myself into this enclosed space. I'm going to take a lantern down there with me. And I'm not going to bury myself six feet under. I'm not going to do that. I'm going to... I feel there's sort of like a revolving door energy associated with this hermit card. Like you go in to it on the weekends or maybe twice a week. You see a therapist. Some of you, this could be a therapist. There is this idea that the hermit sometimes... Um, is sort of like a shaman or or a guide along a spiritual path or a guide along a troubled narrow path sometimes not all the time so for some of you you could be cooperating with someone else who encourages you to go deep and kind of you know make sure you take care of yourself make sure you get in your your reflective and, 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 and considerate space, but you don't go super deep. Like I said, this hermit is not what he's not reading like a normal hermit would. And that's because I think you were kind of with the nine of cups energy seas adrift or, or ships on a sea. And that's adrift. It's kind of like it was so big, your dream or your, your, you built up this idea of this person in your head or this this opportunity in your mind and you just were dreaming a lot about this and it didn't go your way and so now you're like okay i don't want to do that again i don't want things to be too big so that they become unobtainable or they become so magnified and so grand that it's actually unrealistic a lot of unrealistic things were going on back there okay Hermit is a lot more realistic. Hermit is a lot more practical, methodical. And, and, and like I said, he's got that guiding light feel about him where he's not going to lead himself or others astray. He's not going to deal with fantasy. He deals a lot with reality. And that was manifested, or that was manifested, but that is in tandem with your Queen of Pentacles energy as well as that Eight of Pentacles energy, which is, again, feeling like got a hand in the practical realm and, and, and doing practical things that affect reality, but then also that X, that X factor or that unknown variable factor. It's, it's really weird. This is a weird reading. I've got to tell you. And I think it's because like you've had a lot, like I said, you, maybe that's what you're doing. You're editing. Thank you. Finally, we, we got something I could freaking relate to or kind of understand. You're editing your life, Cancer. And you're doing it by... I th did I... Was that you? 
was that Gemini? Somebody, I think it was in September. Might have been you, but I can't remember. Someone was like observing other people. It might have been Gemini. If it's if it was Gemini, I apologize. But this is sort of reminding me of that, where things were not going a certain way in your life, or things got sort of out of hand or out of proportion or just, you know, didn't turn out the way you wanted. And so now you have to go back to the drawing board. And now you kind of have to, have to make sort of like these, like I said, edits. You're lo like you're tweaking the system. And it's, it's kind of haywire. Like it's not flowing the way my readings typically do. Because the fact that I went from here to here, like that was, this was your first position and this was your second. I don't normally jump like that. So I feel like it's slightly haywire, it's slightly unpredictable, or it's slightly askew what you're doing and how you're doing it, but it makes sense because you have, you feel compelled. You're like, it has to be this way. It has to be this way. It cannot be any other way. And that looks kind of crazy to some people. Like, anyway, why am I talking about this? You've got the chariot. It's your card, Cancer, so you've shown up in your own reading, so that's always good. And usually is an affirmation that things are things are meant to resonate in some way with you, or there's a certain message here for you, nuanced or not. And the Chariot is a card traditionally about choices, it's about finding internal cooperation or the cooperation between two different energies. In the traditional Rider Waite, it shows a man on a chariot with like a white sphinx or a white horse or a, and a black sphinx or a black horse, and he's trying to get these two beasts to to work together. Not so much here, <laughs> in, as far as visually. That's not really what's going on here. There is this sort of feeling of cooperation or having things go a certain way. Um... But there's a lot more moving pieces or there's a lot more dynamic energy involved in this particular chariot card. Like, I've seen this card plenty of times and I still can't 100% understand it because I feel like, yes, thank you. You're so smart, guys. You guys are so smart. So, <laughs> I've, I've read this card before and I've focused on like the caravan leader because this is like a caravan like sort of depiction. It's sort of like... A bunch of gypsies right and this one guy in the black in the center is sort of like the leader of this he's got all these other people with him he's got these females in the purple and the blue and the yellow and the red and he's sort of like leading them or kind of is like in partnership with them and that's a lot more than just a man in a chariot trying to get two horses to move in the same direction this would require a lot more finesse a lot more nuance to really work with six or five different individuals so like i said there's a lot of stuff going on in your life right now cancer or there's a lot of different uh considerations or concessions that you're having to make um but the thing that because i was looking at this card is like what else is there like i'm like yes the caravan yes having to navigate uh, and, and move into unknown territory or bring sort of also with this I usually get like bring the circus to town is sort of like what this feels like like a night of enchantment and entertainment by these five or six figures that have just blown into this little sleepy backwoods town and well we're gonna put on a show for you da -da 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 -da. you know like there's this feeling of interjecting something unusual into something that's very mundane and boring or predictable and that might be what you're doing um but what when I was looking at the card sort of like this and actually closer to my face I've seen this figure before up there in the corner that whitish pale blue figure and I'm like what is that who is that Ooh, tell me and then they told me it's like a shaman it's like a guide it's like this overseer or this spiritual hand that sort of has even more control or more influence than the leader of the caravan 
Why is that significant? Why are we talking about this? As much as this is not about your spirituality or this is like about you not diving deep into your own spirituality, I feel that there is definitely a subtext. There's definitely an underlying, uh, or excuse me, an under, underground, subterranean feel of spirituality in your reading cancer. So as much as you're injecting this sort of abnormal behavior or approach to things that we talked about here and here and between the two opposite approaches here, as much as that's really like <clears throat> the main course, <laughs> so to speak, the side dish is the, the, the sprinkling of, of spirituality or religion. If it's not, if you're not a spiritual person, if you are more religious or you have religious teachings as your background, or you straight up believe in a certain deity, then it would be a religious thing. And it's peppered, sprinkled in the background here, here with the cross on the front of the coffin, right? Totally, total religious imagery, right? And then here also, what is this big like perspectively that figure up there in the corner is way bigger than these six figures here is is this a puppeteer is this some type of overseer or some type of mythical mystical deity in the sky whatever there's like a bigger almost inseparable energy that's guiding all of this that has always been there. Spirituality going to here, 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 here. You've got these, you've got these cards that kind of seem unaffected by spiritual or, or esoteric energy, but they are. Everything is touching. It's all touching. It's peppered in there. I don't know how that's significant to you, Cancer, but I hope it is. If it is, tell me how. Talk about it. <laughs> but I feel it's like definitely in the backdrop. It's definitely something that's there. And again, punishment and given the... Yes, bring me back to it. And given the word that I wanted to say earlier that I didn't say but was connected to this card, it's definitely in your peripheral. It's definitely in there somehow this spiritual thing this religious thing this idea that something is something greater than you is at work or at play in your situation cancer it's here but you've been approaching things methodically practically you've kind of had your eye on one goal and you've kind of like i said had an inkling in the back of your mind but you haven't fully in acknowledged it you haven't fully embraced it because you've been so focused on doing what was different doing what was opposite or expected of you I mean, people expect you to lock yourself away and punish yourself when things don't go your way and you're heartbroken or you're defeated or you're feeling disappointed people expect that of you but you've actually been keeping yourself uh, a part of the conversation or a part of the group you haven't hidden yourself away completely and you are maybe thinking cancer that that's just me i'm i'm becoming a different person or i'm 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 not i'm cultivating cultivating a different part of my personality cultivating harvesting planting and then reaping this new part of myself because I don't want to be like this anymore and I don't want to experience this again so I'm going to do practical things to make sure that happens and again pentacles are about things that you can touch taste see smell interact with physical things in the 3d world very logical things pentacles is a logical energy as are the swords cards but somehow somewhere in the subtext in the subterranean uh, uh, levels of your life cancer you know or you feel or you suspect or you just have a a, 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 a a bug in your ear that says it's more than me it's more than me whether or not that is a religious thing or a spirituality thing or even just a thing of I didn't get here by myself I have great support behind me I have angels with me whatever you think whatever you believe or don't believe in I don't know but that's here. We finally got there. 
It really was confusing me for a long time. I was just like, why would I go from here to here? What is this? Like, it was really hard for me to connect these dots. But I have connected your dots. Hopefully. I have for myself. Like, I'm understanding myself. Hopefully you understand. Okay. Now, your outcome. Which, again, when we shuffled, two, two came out initially. And I was just like, I wasn't feeling that. And then I went to shuffle again. And then, boom, two came out again. So, maybe that is like some outer influence that I didn't acknowledge but made itself known to me. Does that make sense? Like, I didn't want those two cards. I just didn't feel connected to them. And then the next time I shuffled, it's like, no, 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 honey, we meant two cards. Here's another two for you. Okay? So, that could be happening in your life, Cancer. Like, that, like this whole thing that you kind of think is coincidental or, or certain things or certain results or certain certain situations in your life that feel coincidental, that feel kind of like un, unconnected from other uh, parts of your life are actually very connected and there is no coincidence. It's like purposely being put there. So pers people might be crossing your path repeatedly on purpose. Situations or circumstances might be repeating in your life on purpose. But you've been so focused on the practical, you've been so focused on this whole uh, 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 sort of plotted and, and outlined way of approaching situations differently that you're kind of taking the mysticism out of it. You're kind of ignoring that. Should you, should you not, that's up for you to decide. But anyway, <laughs> I, I felt compelled to repeat that two came out previously I said no and then they came right back out not the same cards but two cards nonetheless and two very powerful cards because they're both major arcanas strength card this, this colorful guy here and the hangman strength card card associated with Leo so there might be a Leo of significance in your life cancer but it does not have to be and the hangman not really associated with uh, any particular sign but still a major arcana and <laughs> These are kind of opposite, you know, in, in certain ways. Because, one, as you can see, the strength card is a luchador, or is being presented as a luchador in this deck, and he's wrestling what looks like a dragon, or might be considered a lion, maybe is more considered... I don't know much about this Mexican lore with dragons, but it might... It, it mimics... A Chinese lion to me. I'm all like up here. There you go. <laughs> uh, it mimics sort of like a Chinese lion to me. So there might be some cross reference in culture there, or I'm inserting that, but whatever. Uh, it's really about this whole domineering power, this this very extravagant, very obvious power that this luchador would have over this creature, would have over this beast. And so obviously this is talking about physical strength or mental strength or fortitude, what have you. Um, and, and, and having the ability to overcome difficult situations. And that's in your outcome. So I feel whatever you are feeling here from your past that was difficult, that you punished yourself, that you basically gave yourself like 40 lashes for, you whipped yourself and you locked yourself away and you punished yourself for whatever you lost or whatever you think you gave away or whatever you think was stolen away from yourself, you're going to move past that. You're going to have the fortitude and the ability to just say, you know what? I'm not going not gonna to lock myself away for that. I'm not going to knock myself down because of that uh, situation over and over again. I'm going to release it. I'm going to, you know, you're just going to make it your bitch for lack of a better uh, word right now you're gonna make that issue or that feeling of regret and guilt you're just gonna put it to bed with your strength um and I think it's because you've had this hangman energy in 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 tandem with it working right alongside that strength energy and the hangman which is not mm, let me see what is that mm. Oh, okay, I see. <laughs> okay, I see. Interesting. Okay, so the hangman... Pumpkin? Is that a pumpkin? Or a gourd? Some kind of gourd there. Oh. 
<laughs> so this hangman really, I think, is... Whoa, I almost dropped that on the floor. Uh, this hangman, I feel, is a little bit more connected directly to the Four of Swords and the Nine of Cups. Because I feel like this is sort of like... The hangman can be this self-imposed punishment feeling sometimes. Like, you know... <laughs> In the traditional Rider way, it shows a man hung by one foot, or um, dangling by one ankle, right? Up a tree or up a branch or whatever. And sometimes you have to, or not that you have to, but oftentimes he is being described as he put himself there. That hangman in the traditional decks puts himself in that position. There's this feeling of that here too. But in this case, you're, you're not dangling upside down, Cancer. You have the hands of this figure are on the post. So you've controlled this feeling of stagnancy. I feel a stagnancy. I feel this feeling of being... <sighs> mm. Give me more. Stagnancy. Give me more, please. Like, the, the degrees to which, like, the severity of the punishment has been your choosing. So, if you choose to lock yourself away on weekends and, and not answer text messages and not go out and hang out with your friends, that was your choice. If you choose to draw the blinds and not get up until 2.30 in the afternoon. That's your choice. If you choose not to eat and so you're just like walking around with like a grumbling tummy all day and people are looking at you like you're crazy. Like, are you going to eat something? You're like, no, I don't deserve to eat. That was your choice. So this strength card is overcoming the hangman energy. And the hangman is, a, is, a, is, is, is also about time. Like, he's literally hung up. He's, he's up a tree. He's up a pole. He's up somewhere. And he can't go anywhere. And so time just kind of passes by. And he's still there after a day, after two days, three days, four days, two weeks, five weeks, whatever. So there was a long time spent in this... Like I said, this self-imposed prison or, or, pun well, okay, I did say, I, that was the first time I said prison, so for some of you, maybe you were in prison, uh, but um, what I really meant to say was punishment, and so you did that, you controlled that time that you spent there, you didn't, you spent as long of a time there as you wanted to, except for in prison, in the case of prison, <laughs> you were not in control of that, um, but for those who, you know, it's just about punishment, it's just about really, you know, not cutting yourself any slack and really being down on yourself, you controlled how long that was going on. Now you're going to control how it's going to stop or when it's going to stop. It's very distinct and opposite. Like I said, opposite. I feel like these two cards are opposite. Opposite. Grand open ocean. Like, kind of, like I said, dr very dreamy to, like, build, like, grandiose. Grandiose. Too big. So big you can't really see it for the, for what it really is. Like, oh, too much. Just enough. Practical. It's... A lot of opposites here. I hope it made sense or is making sense. We're almost done. <laughs> but, and if it hasn't made sense, the message isn't for you. But if it's made sense, then I'm glad. Now, your overall energy for the month of October, Cancer, is the Page of Pentacles. A lot of pentacles. A lot of earth energy. And your water, so. 
not your wheelhouse might be a little strange or it's happening and you might not be able to articulate how and why this is happening. These changes in perspective, these changes in behaviors, these changes in your attitude, you might, you might not be able to, to put your finger on what's going on, but it's there. It's tangible. It's noticeable, these changes. Okay. Uh, but anyway, overall energy for October, Page of Pentacles. So sort of the lowest on the totem pole and well not sort of is the lowest on the totem pole in terms of court cards um and that might be sort of what i was just saying where you know things are different and you know you're different and you know that you're going to do things differently you're going to approach things differently and you know that you have been but you might not be able to go back and maybe pinpoint the exact moment when these changes were enacted or the exact time or or state of mind or emotional state that you were in like it's just different and you know it's different you know you're different and there's this interest in pursuing that difference there's a there's an interest in pursuing going about things in a way that you've never experienced before that you're not necessarily familiar with that you're not necessarily accustomed to if you have never in your life gone on a yoga retreat the four days or the three days that you're going to spend away that's enough for you you don't want to go ham you don't want to go diving in the deep end here and spend two weeks away because that's normally what you did, minus the yoga retreat part. But that's what you did. You would spend two weeks in a deep depression or a deep funk. Or you would cut off all social media contact. And, you know, people would be wondering, oh, what's going on with cancer? And, and somebody else would be like, well, this is what he does every, like, six months or so. So now you're interested in going about doing it in a different way and cultivating and, and, and really gaining the skill set or gaining a skill set that's not known to you it's unknown to you the page of pentacles all the pages are explorers they all want to get more of what is in their in their element uh so you want more practical skills you want more practical understanding you want more logical understanding you want to be able to if this is a fight if somehow there's a financial element to this you want to understand different ways to grow your money to invest your money to save your money and the reason the page would be an overall in overall energy even though it's quote unquote lower than the queen that's showed up in your main is because the page is continually doing this continually interested in developing and, and moving up the ladder, so to speak, or moving further along the path. So I think that's what's going to continue is this curiosity, this wanting to learn, this wanting to, uh, to obtain new information, new skills, new ways of looking at a situation. You, I, does, I'm going to say, does that make sense as if you're here to answer me, but you're not. <laughs> I hope it makes sense is, is, is more what I would be going for there. So this Page of Pentacles, I think, is actually super duper helpful to you, Cancer. I think that this Page of Pentacles is really going to inform you. And again, I think it's going to be really subtle. I think it's going to be super uh, subterranean or subconscious for you. I don't even think a lot of you, like, this made sense. Uh, yes, I feel like this made sense to you guys. But again, I don't think that you would be able to articulate or pinpoint exact moments and exact situations or people or or places of residence resonance where you're like yeah yeah totally and then back on this day or back when i was talking to so and so da, 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 like i don't think it's coming across that way for you guys i think you're just like getting the general gist of this there's like a general misting effect like this kind of sprinkles or or showers over your life in general it is a general reading but i feel like it's super general your reading is like super general like it, a lot of pentacles could be your job could be money but in other cases it could be your home life if it could be the structure to your home life or your actual physical home you can meet this can plug into so many different arenas in your life cancer i hope it plugged into something <laughs> and um so yeah i'm gonna end the reading there i hope it you enjoyed it i hope something made sense to you something resonated for you if it did 
go ahead and tell me below in the comments section. I would love to hear about it. Uh, also, feel free to hit the like button if you ever feel so inclined. You don't have to if you don't want to. I'm cool with it either way. Uh, you can also subscribe to the channel if you're not already subscribed, and you can also uh, share the video, and that would be amazing too. I'll be back in about three or four weeks, and then I, at that time I will do your November reading. Until then, guys, thank you so much for watching up until this point. Take care. Bye.